Let us now look at the natural and forced response once again. We are going to uh, look from different perspective because as I said, we will try to understand each and everything on this simple circuit, the RL circuit. And the force response is what we are looking at right now. But let us now discuss from a mathematical point of view, how we can uh, arrive or understand the natural response and force response. So for example, a typical differential equation from mathematics point of view that we have encountered till now would look something like this. So we have a constant here, P, and then I. So this term has a derivative of I. This is this has I itself. And then we are going to get something like Q here. Let us for now assume that Q is a function of time as well. Although the sources that we use in this circuit, uh, in this course are uh, DC sources, constant sources, constant sources. So therefore, uh, we will take this as constant, but we will, we will take that constant later on. So uh, this P, uh, you can match with the RL circuit and see what this P is and what this Q is. So how to solve this circuit, uh, sorry, this equation, differential equation. So we can write this as di plus pi dt and q dt. Now in pure mathematics, uh, there is a method of solving differential equations where we take a, an integrating factor and multiply both sides with an integrating factor. You will see the benefit of doing this because obviously when we do something, we are not, uh, we don't want to, ch to change the mathematical uh, equality. So whatever we do here, we do here, we must make sure that this equality holds. So in, in differential equations, although you will cover this, you may cover this in the differential equation course, but we take an integ integrating factor and multiply both sides with it. Here the multiplicate, multi, oh sorry, integrating factor is that we are going to use to multiply both sides is basically uh, e raised power integral of p dt. Integral of this p. Now p the constant, so integral of p dt is the same as exponent of p dt di plus pi dt q dt. What do we get here? E pt di plus i p e as per pt dt q e as per pt dt. This pure mathematics, nothing much, but look at this, this left hand side now. So this is a function of time. And then this is a function of time, it. So remember that, that rule, the uv rule, how to take the derivative of uv is the same as u as is and the derivative of v plus v as is and derivative of u. Remember this thing? So this term is exactly that. u as is derivative of v and v as is derivative of u. So we can write this whole thing as the derivative of both the functions i into e raised power pt is equal to q e raised power pt dt. So what do we get here? So if we now take integral on both sides, this derivative and antiderivative are going to cancel. So we are going to get i e raised power pt is equal to the integral q e raised power pt dt plus a, a is the constant of integration. Now if q is a function of time, 
we are going to obviously solve this whole integral. But we can simplify this and if q is constant, we can bring it out. And obviously i can be found by multiplying with e raised power minus pt on both sides. So we are going to get e raised power minus pt here, integral q e raised power pt dt plus k e raised power minus pt. This thing goes to the other side. Now this is a solution. We have found what i is in a mathematical way. Now if you, uh, if you look at, uh, let us look at the natural response only. So when we were discussing the natural response, there were no forcing function in the circuit or that Q was zero. So if this thing is zero, this whole thing goes away and we are left with I that is equal to A e raised power minus P T. So this is the way, uh, this is the form of the natural response. And the natural response approaches zero because this is a decaying exponent because P is always going to be positive. Why it would be positive? Because P depends on values of R, L, and C usually. So if, if the equivalent, Thevenin equivalent of a circuit is has negative resistance, then this will be uh, negative. Otherwise, it will always be positive value. So this is a decaying exponent. So with time, it's going to die out. So see, we can easily um, use the initial conditions and in that sense, the, uh, the things we know before the circuit was, uh, circuit was looked at in a source-free circuit, a source-free circuit where there is no source in the circuit. So all we have is an inductor that already has energy and it releases energy through a resistor. So this has a state. So, so sorry, not voltage. This already had some current flowing in it. Remember when we discussed the source free circuit, we discussed this in detail. So uh, this thing, th this has a state when the circuit started its operation. So, and there is no input in the circuit. Uh, there is another community, the control systems community or the signal design system community, and that described this circuit and the response with the name zero input response. This is another uh, term that can be added to that list of natural response and force response and the steady state response, transient response and the uh, complementary solution and the particular integral or particular solution. So this community says this, this solution will be called the zero input response because there is no input. All we have is a state. And when we have that uh, voltage source with R and L as in previous videos, they call that the zero state response. Remember? The inductor there did not have a uh, did not have initial current there, so that is known as zero state response. So these are two terms. In zero state response, all the energy storing elements must have zero state. Why? Because we want to find how the input is going to behave. For example, in the case where we that we were dealing with, we have a voltage source and then an R and L. This is the case of zero state response. This does not have a state before the circuit started operation. So this is zero state response and this is zero input response. These are, these are two other terms. But because in circuit analysis, usually we use the terms natural response, for example, the, the natural response, the force response, or the terms that I like basically are the transient response, this is the transient response and then the, uh, the steady state response. So the response in this case has only a transient response term, no steady state or the steady state term is zero because once all the energy here is released, what we are left with is an inductor with no energy. So that is its steady state response. So 
this is how natural response can be found. When Q is zero, we can find this. But what about the forced response? So now if we look at this thing, and let us try to find the forced response for this case. So in, in the uh, forced response, we can see when the transient part is out, this is the forced response. If for the case where Q, the forcing function is constant, Q will be constant, it can come out of the integral. And then we are going to get the integral of e raised power pt is e raised power pt over p. So we are going to get i is equal to q over p. And this is the force response. So we get the same thing. Remember in this circuit, in the RL circuit, driven RL circuit, this was equal to, so this A is not computed from the initial, some initial state directly. So it has a complicated, um, not complicated actually, but uh, we need to understand how to compute this. But this was directly computed. So for example, in the example that we are studying, this was equal to V naught over R and this A was equal to minus V naught over R e raised power minus R over L T. So P basically is R over uh, L over uh, sorry R over L. So here this Q is something that we can find. So Q over P would be V naught over R. P is R over L. So we can find the, what this Q would be equal to. So in this, uh, in the force response case, whenever we have, we are finding the complete response. So we say I is equal to a part that resembles so uh, we say that the complete response is equal to a part that resembles the natural uh, response and a part that resembles the forced uh, form, for, forcing function form. So how to find um, the natural part? We know that the natural part is equal to A something, so we have a constant here, minus, r over l t because p is equal to r over l plus we know this is equal to v naught over r so this is easy this part is easy how we have found this how we have found this part because as we have already discussed we can apply t is equal to infinity the this part is going to be zero and we are going to be left with Q over P here, or in, in, a, in a circuit, for example, we are going to see, we are going to know that the magic of the energy storing element will cease there and it will contain energy, no longer, the energy is no longer going to be changing. So basically an inductor, for example, behaves as a short circuit. So we are going to be left with V naught over R as the current. So a question, a very interesting question is, Usually there is a mistake that uh, students do that they say, okay, how to compute this constant here, A. Remember this constant is not equal to the initial uh, voltage, for example, this is not V naught. We already know what it is, but usually they do this thing or they, they try to solve it this way. They start from here, they say, okay, I is equal to A e raised power minus PT. So what uh, they do, is they say, okay, we know that I initially is zero. So let us apply T is equal to zero here in this equation. And then they say, okay, I zero is equal to A e raised power zero. So A is equal to zero. No, that's wrong. That's not uh, what we, we should do. Why? Because this part, the natural response part, is only a part of the complete solution. So we must apply this, this condition 
initial condition on the whole solution. So now this is the whole solution. Now put t is equal to zero in this one. So we are going to get the initial current is now equal to a e raised power zero is one plus v naught over r. Now we know this is zero and therefore we can say a is equal to minus v naught over r, whatever we know we knew earlier on. So if if you if you try to understand what I am trying to uh, trying uh, to teach you, you are going to see that it is very simple. Doing this thing is not very difficult. I am going to uh, teach you once again.